Oh, tubers! Uh oh, truck's in a shop. What's going on here? Hey, well, anyway, the other night, uh, there's a puddle of gas under it. Oh, right there. And uh, I thought I'd better take a look at that. And the fuel pump is mounted on the back side of the frame, right here. And the housing is leaking on the fuel pump, but it was developing real good pressure. So, I have it over on the bench. Let's go take a look at it. I'll show you what's going on. Well, here we'll have a look at the pump. Now, before I get into this, a lot of times I prefer saving any of the old components versus buying new. The quality just ain't there on a lot of these new products. You know what I mean for that. Uh, the other thing is, this is what got me here. Where at the end of the year, it all adds up when you got to just go buy stuff. So, you kind of know what I mean there, too. Now, for the pump, this here would be the inlet. Uh, these guts here set inside the case. Now, when it's all assembled, this end here is crimped, and that's what keeps this end here from popping out. Now, the O-rings were bad. This one here, you can see it, was on the outer side of the case here. That's what was leaking. But, of course, you do them both. There's another O-ring on the back side here, too. Uh, when I uncrimp this, it holds it together, kind of little boogers and divots, so a little bit of die grinder touch-up eliminates that possibility, so O-rings don't get damaged when you slide it back together. It's kind of funny when you're taking this stuff apart and then you hear the brushes go clack clack, you know there might be a little challenge ahead to get the tension off of them to get what you're working on back together. Well, what I come up with here, you can see your load spring on the end of the brush. And I took a chunk of house wire and stripped it back and slid that over, that spring, and then that takes the load off. And we'll do side B here and I should be able to get it back together. So let's get that spring holder on side B. There we have it. I gotta show you this too. Did you ever work on something and have something you thought should be optional and didn't put it back in when you were working on a certain whatever? Anyway, uh, where this was in here, like so. This biscuit right here was inside of that case. I have no idea what this is for. And I think I'm gonna call it optional. If you know, let me know. Okay, I have that one brush, lightly touching the armature on the back side. Give this one a real light touch here. And there we go. Good, good. Want the pins. See the wires are touching, springs I should call them, on the other brushes, and should be good to go. Well, I have a pump mounted in the vise here. We're going to drop the case on. Now, for assembling, everybody uses their own thing, grease, oil, whatever, on O-rings, and this is what I prefer. Even if you got an injector, you got to get out of an intake manifold. You give it a little touch of this right around where the injector sits in. You can rotate it off center a little bit. They'll come right out versus all these other techniques without ever damaging a fuel injector while removing it. Also, for cleaning carburetors, throttle bodies, this is the best at the present time. Everything is so darn watered down and crappy nowadays. In case you're interested, uh, that would be the part number. Now, for this, I'm just going to give it a light woof in the cover here, and we'll slide it on. I'll show you how good that works. That's it. I put some pressure on it with the vise to get a little more tension on O-rings, and tapping in the the locks they had all the way around. Put this thing together. Don't look pretty, but it should work, so we'll find out shortly. 
Okay, got the barbs installed, and I got the hosing crimped all the way around to the end here. And uh, a little tip for you too, you let your kids use the car. Make sure you don't ever run it out of gas, because uh, gas goes through these for lubrication, and you crank, 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 that wrecks the crap out of these pumps. It really shorten the life, so a little trivia for you today. But I'm just going to run in a couple seconds. I got the current limited power supply set up here. We're going to make sure this thing works. We're good to go. So let's go do an install. Okay, tubers. We got everything all back together here. Good. Let's prime the pump up several times and check for leaks. So once again, we have some more optional parts here. And so, you know, I have the nylon line install kit now. I thought we'd upgrade a few things, but there's a little more to the story here. And let me share that with you. I thought I'd come in the office here and get you a picture of something that is optional on my truck, pretty much so since it was new. This piece here went inside a frame. It was a fuel accumulator, air fuel separator, yada yada. Anyway, the fuel filter is inside of here. You had to unscrew this. Little tiny o-ring was always a pain to get that set back in properly. I just didn't care for this design. And I had a customer vehicle that got a, that was a tow-in. And good thing you do a little testing because you would have thought the fuel pump was bad, there was no pressure, and the guts came apart inside of this thing. So my truck no longer has this in. I'll go show you what I did. Well, up here you can see that one union. And that was the line where it came over here. That accumulator would have been bolted right in here. And then now that line just goes onto this union. It's just a straight through pass. Uh, this is a real common fuel filter that Ford uses. And what I've done now is these ends here are nice because you can just use your fingers to press them in and slide the line off. No tools necessary. Now let's come back up on a fuel pump here. And this T here that you might have seen in the line, that goes to the front of the vehicle. Show you what that's for. And that fuel line comes around front here, and I have an auxiliary fuel pump. And you got to turn a switch on in the cab, and then you can control it right here on and off as you're using it. There's a quick disconnect right here, coupler, you can plug your hose in and fill up your gas can, your three wheeler, or even your IO boat right off of the fuel tank on a truck here. No, I do have a video on this. Uh, it's called, Did You Waste Gas Getting Gas? In case you're interested. Anyway, got a neat little tale here for you while we're on the subject here of the auxiliary fuel pump. Years ago, I had the same setup on my CJ5 Jeep. I had a boat that had a 40 gallon onboard fuel tank. Well, I filled up the Jeep at the gas station and then I went to fill up the boat and went back to the gas station. And he turned and said, weren't you just in here? And I says, yeah, I don't think I'm getting real good gas mileage with your fuel, though. Well, anyway, it's, you always got to have a little bit of extra fun every day. I'm not sure if I'm going to put this in the video or not. Either way, if I do, I hope you enjoy it. Well, tubers, I hope you found the video entertaining and even grabbed a few ideas for what you might be working on. Hope to catch you back here again. There's more! Hey tubers, I'll show you a little project I had a couple months ago. I bought this dinosaur back in 1984. Well it quit working. All it lit up was these two little duds. I would have made a repair video of the microwave. I don't know, I just think you folks would probably find that a little too boring. But I know you always like my homemade gadgets, so I'm going to show you this one. This is my capacitor tester. Nothing spectacular, but 
Anyway, there's A, B switch on it for which one you're testing. And these two leads that go to the meter, this switch here, just inverts the polarity each time so you can see how far the meter moves to know how good it is. Now, let's, we're on A right now. This is a brand new one here, so we're going to throw a switch and we'll see how far the meter moves. Okay, now, to compare it, put it on side B, this is the one that was out of the microwave. Throw a switch, see how far the meter moves. That one is totally dead, of course, definitely needs replacing. There was a couple other ones that were a little bit weak, I had them here, so I put them in too right away. And voila, let's keep the microwave out of the landfill, and it works great again. Before we go, I gotta show you this. What this is for is it presses these ends into the nylon tubing. So like this is the adapter here for the straight ends. You'd slide it onto here and then ratchet it in. Well this tool's been a piece of junk since day one and you can see it hasn't been used that much and already the thing failed. So this qualifies for dumpster food. Let's check out some other options. Well, I just got back from the hardware store. And which one do you think I should use? Well, I'll give you a look at what I created here. Uh, I like this tool here. It seemed to work really sweet. And to give you an idea how much I had to alter the perch there, this is the size that would have been here. Now that's got to be cut up like this so you can slide your tooling on and of course so you can have a through hole for when you want to do a splice. Now also on the other end here this had to be cut down a little bit so you can put your clamps on for that. I'm not too worried about this busting off where you just got your force going straight on to this part here so I don't know I think we'll be okay and uh, how about a demo I'll show you guys how this works so here we are with this all set up on a 90 degree elbow and this is actually what I was trying to do last time when the other tool broke another problem was this piece here was too long it would actually come in contact with these blocks here so that has been shortened up let's go for a test drive here and we'll see how this works. Oh heck, I'll show you taking this out of the jig here too right away. And another screw here. some rubber hose on that too before they just had that little stud sticking into here. Didn't care for that either. And lo and behold we now have an installation. So let's attempt to do a splice and because this will bottom out right here we're going to leave the nylon tubing hang out a little more for this procedure. I have everything all installed in the jig here and we're going to now attempt to install this place. seen that and that's your final product. And now you can see why I had to cut the slit in that hosing. Let's finish getting this out of here. Taking it apart. Good. 
there you have it, the final product. And wouldn't that be nice if they made stuff like this right out of the box, but no, no. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the little add-on. Thought I'd include this right away too. I didn't know if you folks would find it interesting or not. Hopefully you did. So, now we're gonna go.